In this video, let's talk about how to pass the rule HID devices in EXXI. I'm using ESXI 6.7 and the so-called HID device is meaning human interface device. For example, your keyboard and your mouse. You know in ESXi, you can easily pass through all sorts of devices, for example, your SATA controller uh, or whatever PCI uh, card, but you may realize you cannot pass through your keyboard or your mouse by default. The system simply doesn't allow that. The reasoning behind it is EXSI doesn't think that's necessary to pass through at all. So you can easily use your ESXi virtual machine client to use your local keyboard and mouse. But in some situation, for example, a Linux based operating system I try to install, it require real physical keyboard to continue the installation. It simply doesn't recognize the virtual machines uh, local keyboard from your client. Okay, I'll show you what I mean. Here is the testing virtual machine. I try to add a USB device and it tells me there are no USB device available. But I know I just plug in my USB keyboard to my server. To enable the USB keyboard pass through, you need two steps. First step, you need to change the ESXi kernel boot option to let the server ignore the USB device. And then the second step, you need to tell your virtual machine, okay, you want to pass through that USB device. Let me show you. Before you can even work on the first step, you need to know the product ID and the vendor ID for your USB device. Uh, the way to tell it is to SSH into your server. Here I'm showing you, uh, I'm using a terminal and SSH into my EXXI server. And okay, I input my password, I'm in. I need to type in the command ls usb list usb okay it tells me all the usb devices and i know the dell one the very first item is for my usb keyboard because uh, i know my keyboard is from dell and this is the only dell device listed so as you can see uh, the, the first section, the bus ID, device ID, you can ignore it. And the important part is this section. So the, the value before colon 413C is for my vendor ID. I believe it's for Dell. And the 2113, that's for my product ID, that particular USB device. So no doubt these two values, they are very important in our following steps. Okay, before we uh, start changing the configuration, let's prepare a magic string, if you will, first. So I'm showing you the string for my device. The config dot USB quirks means the it's a kernel option for USB quirks and uh, you can see uh, the file sections separated by colon signs. The first part is for my vendor ID and the second part is my uh, product ID and this is the low range, high range uh, and the last part UQ keyboard ignore. Basically that's the uh, quirk option for this particular USB quirks config. So we will use this string uh, multiple times. 
I run my ESXi server on a super micro server. It's rack mounted, so I'm using the built in IPMI interface to remotely view the uh, display. Uh, it may, you may have physical keyboard or monitor, it doesn't matter as long as when uh, the ESXi boot, you have a chance to type in Shift O then you will be able to input whatever extra kernel boot option. Keep that in mind, the key binding is shift O. Now I need to be prepared to input it because I only have several seconds of time. I'm still waiting for the EXXI boot screen. Uh, let me first enable the virtual keyboard and click the shift first so that I will have enough time to click O. Okay, see the, the loading VMware hypervisor and this is the correct moment so you need to hit shift O. Now I'm in, in the bottom of the screen. You can see I already have some uh, kernel boot options. What I need to do is input a new one. So I will type in space and then uh, type in the string we just discussed. Let's continue the uh, boot process. Another way to add the extra boot option is by modifying the configuration file boot.cfg. Now let me launch a terminal ssh into the server. I will edit the file under boot bank folder and the file name is called boot.cfg. Let's move to this particular line. It, it says kernel option and there are existing options there. And what you want to do is you want to append to the end of this particular line. You cannot put that option uh, other places. You have to put it in this particular line and uh, just append it. Okay, so basically it's the same string we already talked about, uh, the config USB quirks, and I won't waste your time. Uh, let's save the file and that's it. That's the, the second approach to add a extra kernel boot option. Another way to add the kernel option is by using the standard UI from EXXI, you go to the host manage and go to the advanced settings tab and uh, make sure you choose uh, in the combo box, uh, you choose quick filters so that the system will list all the options instead of just the one you modify. Then let's find the proper uh, configuration item. So you need to first sort on the key column and then scroll down, try to find something started with USB. Yes, here it is, the USB quirks setting we just talked about in the other two approaches. And now it has value blank, that means it's not overwritten yet and you have the chance to change it. Just click edit option and then use the uh, values we discussed, the magic string, but you want to put the part uh, uh, in the right side of the equal sign, which is the file section part, your vendor ID, uh, product ID, low range, high range, and then the option itself. Then you click save. Uh, keep in mind, after this is overwritten, you need to reboot your EXXI server. 
Now let's summarize the three different approaches to add extra kernel boot options. The first way, uh, during EXXI server boot, you can hit Shift O, then input that stream manually. Keep in mind, this approach will be only effective once, just for this boot. And the next time, if you reboot your server, the setting will be gone. So that's good or bad, depending on your uh, scenario. In my scenario, I only need that USB device to be passed once during my virtual machine installation, so which is good. Uh, that Shift O approach works perfectly for me. But if you want whatever change the, the USB uh, device pass through to be permanent, you may want to consider the other two approaches. The second option uh, to directly editing the system configuration file, which is under the boot bank folder, the boot.cfg file. In fact, I personally prefer that approach uh, because that's quick, easy, and uh, I don't need to go through the UI and I don't need to wait for the awkward uh, five seconds wait time uh, to sh hit shift O. So the second uh, approach is my preferred way. But some people may uh, uh, may be uncomfortable with uh, using the uh, VI editor or SSH into the server. Uh, so uh, you may consider the third approach. The third approach may be most user-friendly. You don't need to manually edit any file. You directly go to the built-in advanced settings on the EXXI UI, and you can uh, override the existing values there. Now we finished the first step. We already let the ESXi server know, okay, please ignore that uh, USB keyboard, please leave it to me. Now we are ready to tell our virtual machine to use that uh, particular USB device. Uh, let me launch a terminal and SSH into my server. Okay, I'm in. Uh, I need to edit a file, which is under etc. VMware and the file name is config. So this is the global virtual machine configuration file and it applies uh, to your every single VM. This is the existing configurations and let me add a new line. And uh, this time the string is slightly different. This is the string you want to input. Uh, let me explain it. Uh, you tell the your virtual machine, I want to have a new config. It's a USB quirk config, and it's for my device zero. So here the zero is just a sequence number within your VM. It doesn't have to be the same as the physical uh, device number in your ESXi server, and here I choose zero. Then let's look at the values uh, behind the echo sign. So the same two sections, uh, two values, product ID, uh, vendor ID, then you say allow. So basically it tells the uh, virtual machine to pass through that uh, particular USB device. Once you save the file, Unfortunately, you need to reboot your ESXi server again. I know in the first step you already uh, rebooted, but uh, this time you have to do it one more time. The reason is this particular virtual machine configuration file is read during the system boot process. So if you don't reboot, it won't be the, the setting you just uh, change, it won't be effective. 
At this moment, you may wonder why we need to edit this global configuration file. Why not simply edit your particular virtual machine's settings? I have the same feeling, and I, to be honest, I tried it. It didn't work for me, so I have to edit this file to make it effective. I don't know why, and. After I make change to this file, I don't need to change anything else in my particular virtual machines setting. So uh, I don't need to go to the virtual machines advanced settings and manually input some options. No, that's it. The second step uh, works for me already. Finally, we finished the two steps. Now let's try in my testing virtual machine to see whether I can see that USB keyboard. Okay, let me go to the setting, try to add other device, add a USB device. Great, I see it. As you can see, it says Dell wired keyboard. Finally, I can use this USB device in my virtual machine. Okay, thanks for watching.